Nobody is planning on going to hell. But one thing is of a certainty, none but the pure in heart are going to even get to taste what heaven is all about. Let us bow our heads in a word of prayer, most gracious and heavenly Father, with a heart full of praise and thanks for all your many wonderful blessings, great and small, and for the power of God, which is under salvation to all that believe. We thank you, Father, for the ten days of fasting and prayer, for bringing us into this hour of the day. Thank you for the message and the messenger that have been bringing forth the message for our ears to hear and our minds to rake in for the willingness to apply these words of wisdom to our everyday walk, our everyday talk, that we may be examples of the kingdom of heaven. This place called heaven, Father, where you sit on your holy throne and the angels and at thine right hand, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So Father, be with us and protect us. Pour out your spirit upon us. Feed us with the wisdom, the knowledge, and the understanding that we might have what is necessarily needed in order to be acceptable in thy sight. In the name of Jesus Christ, we do pray and for his sake. Together can we all say, Amen. Give an honor to God and to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, to the ministers of the doctrine, to the Saints of God, congregation, the elders and the deacons, we say good evening and may God bless you. <clears throat> but truly God is good and his mercy endures to all generation. There's no generation gap where God is concerned. We all, somebody, in every generation, will pick up on the gospel. Somehow or another, we've been grafted into this royal family of God. And that truly is a blessing. Thank God for the scroll which reads obedience, love, reverence, and respect first to God, then to leadership, and then to one another. Thank God for the foundation that standeth sure. It's got a seal on it. The Lord knows that are here, them that are here, so let everyone that name the name of Christ, depart from iniquity. Thank God for the man and the woman of God. Hello, life with Solomon Mishaw and his companion who came and taught us the ways of righteousness and left us with a commandment that I've set everything in order. And he did so by the word of God. Amen. That was the foundation, church. And if we build on this foundation, we need to be very careful how we build upon. So we want to thank God tonight for what he has done. We thank God for the 10 days of fasting and prayer. <clears throat> thank God for saving me, giving me the mind, the desire, and determination. Press on, Lord. Thank God for the church of God and for what it stands for. The principles and the teachings and the doctrines of Christ. I thank God <clears throat> for my parents raising me up in the way of righteousness. Never known the depths of sin as some may have. But one thing is of certainty, sin is sin. And the soul that sinneth, God says it shall die. So I don't care how big or how small. Some folks say, what nothing but a little white lie. A lie is a lie, and all liars shall have their part in a lake that burned with fire and brimstone. Amen. You go into the place where it's prepared for the devil and his angels. Amen. So we thank God indeed <clears throat> for Jesus Christ coming and opening up the way to eternal life. This life is in him, church. He came unto his own, his own received him not. But unto them that did receive him, to them gave he power to become the sons 
of God. Truly, we want to thank God for being grafted into this royal family, royal priesthood, peculiar, compute people, zealous of good works. Amen. Leaning and depending on him every day. We thank God for the theme. This speaking about the faith, the faith of our fathers, that that was once delivered to the saints. As we read in our scriptures, blow the trumpet in Zion, sanctify a fast call a solemn assembly. Gather the people, sanctify the congregation of some of the elders. Gather the children and then those that suck the breasts. Right on down to the young ones. How else will they ever know if you don't introduce them at a young age to what God is all about? Amen. Church is not a plaything. Amen. You leave your toys at home. Amen. Leave all your little gizmos and all that stuff home. Amen. Lock them up in a closet somewhere. This is the time to be solemn. Solemn assembly. And we want to thank God for the messages that have been coming forth. God is correcting. He's chastening. He's encouraging. He's fortifying us against today. The day of judgment. And if you condition and allow yourself to be chastened of him, you will find that you will be conditioned to the degree that God is looking for. Amen. Brother talking about the College of William and Mary. And its standards and its rules and its regulations and the things in which it stands for. Amen. Well, if man can have such a criteria, then God has got qualifications also. Amen. <clears throat> and today we want to speak to you tonight, this evening, we want to speak to you about the qualification of leaders. Amen. The qualification of leaders. Ella says the head must be kept clean. Amen. He said the feet can smell. The head can get together and wash the feet. But if the head gets all mixed up, you got a problem on your hand. And so there are certain qualifications that is required of leadership. Amen. I want to talk to you a little bit about that tonight. As I told my wife some time ago, the reason why I'm so hard on you, the harder I have to be. The harder I am on you, the harder I have to be. I've got to be straight. But the Lord says, be in a readiness to revenge what? All disobedience when what? Your obedience is fulfilled. When you've done what you're supposed to do, then you can talk. Amen. But until you've done what you're supposed to do, hush your fuss. Amen. Close it up. Button, as old folks say, button your lip. Amen. So tonight we want to talk about the qualification of leaders. Amen. Digging, if you will, congregation. Turn with me to the first book of Timothy, the third chapter. The word T-H-E in this instance is used before a noun specifying a field of endeavor. Amen. Leadership. Amen. Leaders it's very important that they be filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen. It is of a necessity. It's interesting how <clears throat> that no matter where you are on the face of this earth, if you have the Holy Ghost, then you will see the scriptures the same no matter where you are. Yeah. I remember asking Pastor Archie of the Philippines, mm -hmm. what's your stand on this homosexual movement? Mm -hmm. 
He said it is a sin. Amen. And God is against sin. Yeah. So then, ain't that interesting? Miles away. There's not but one Lord, one faith, and one baptism. Amen. Amen. There's not going to be a difference, church. God didn't have elders to set up the churches all up and down the East Coast, and each church having a different terminology of what God says. That's right. Amen. There's one thing he was credited for, and that was he kept leadership on one accord. Whether they be in Newport News, Hampton, Norfolk, wherever they might be, they all spake the same thing, and there was no divisions all right. among them. Amen. And he left it on record. I've set everything in order. Don't change nothing. Amen. As Paul said, I fought a good fight. I've kept the faith. Amen. So listen, the word qualification is the qualities and the abilities or accomplishments that makes a person suitable for a particular position or task. Amen. People don't understand. This is not an easy job. Amen. Anybody can stand up and talk. But I'm talking about someone that can lead, someone that can take the burdens of the people, somebody that has compassion and understanding. Not everybody. There's 10,000 instructors, mm -hmm. but not many fathers. Amen. Everybody don't have that fatherly-like spirit. Amen. They just can't deal with it. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. A lot of men done took off and ran and gone in a different direction. When things get tough, they bail out. Yeah. Amen. That's but you got to learn to hang in there. Hang in there. Amen. Got to learn to hang in there. Amen. So as it says, the qualities and abilities, ability to be able to solve difficult situations. And then what kind of accomplishments mm. have you made? that makes a person suitable for a particular position or task. Amen. Son said he's looking forward to school. Amen. I had talking to one young freshman who said she came from the honor roll, didn't miss nothing Always A's, all the way through. Hmm. And she came to the College of Women, Mary, and she thought she was something. She hmm. said it was a great wake-up call because hmm. everybody's smart at this school. Yeah. Amen. Everybody's smart. I've never been around so many smart people. Amen. So <clears throat> looking forward to the challenge. Amen. Careful what you ask for. <laughs> or you just might get it. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Looking forward to it. Just like those advanced courses in high school. When you got into them, find out they're a little stiff. Amen. Then he wants to crawfish. I said, oh no. You ain't crawfishing. But I don't need them that. I don't need them. I'm already. You started, you going to finish. Amen. So stay behind him, sister. Keep him prayed up and geared up. Encouraged in the way. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. You see, the reward came when the advanced diploma. Mm -hmm. Amen. When he had that the advanced diploma, yeah. watching across the stage. Amen. Everybody else got a regular. He got an advance. Amen. Qualifications. In the word of, O-F, associated with, belonging, or connected to. And we're talking about leaders tonight. Amen. It's not just standing before the people reading the scripture. There's more to it than that. That's right. Amen. And we're going to talk about those qualifications and see how you measure up. Amen. Right. And if you ain't up, get up. Amen. Amen. And if you can't get up, shut up. 
Amen. Church. Amen. All right. Listen now. First Timothy. Mm -hmm. Leaders are those who lead or guide. Leaders are those who is in charge or in command. Watch this. Of others. Now you tell me. You want a drunk man driving your car down the road. Amen. Somebody that ain't got no sense. Don't know which way they're going. Unstable. Can't depend on them. Amen. How we doing, church? Come on. You want somebody dependable at the wheel. I remember when my son Matthews was 18 years old. I sent him out to Blacksburg. Amen. And it snowed on him. Snowed on him out there. Coach called me up. Howard, snowing out here. Said, yes, sir. Is 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 he gonna be all right? Amen. I said, Coach, he'll be all right. Amen. Isn't that something? But he needed to hear from someone with authority. To give him some encouragement because he was looking at this young man just started driving and had to deal with snow and he's got all these high powered influential players at his responsibility. Mm -hmm. Mm. Amen. He want to make sure the man after him was more than a man. Amen. Good drive. But he passed the test. Amen. Amen. He brought him. Yeah, gotta go he he kind of got a little up to that and told the coach, y'all want to go home? Get on the bus. Amen. He was going to bring them all home. Coach said he did a wonderful job. Yeah. How is that? That's a driving little young man you got there. Yeah. Amen. Yes. Thank you, Anytime you're promoted, there's always going to be a test. Amen. Amen. There's always going to be a test. You look at Daniel. When mm. Daniel was promoted, here they come. Here they come. Lying on him, conspired against him, and had him thrown in the lion's den. Amen. But God shut the mouths of the lion. Daniel made it on through. Mm -hmm. So qualifications we're talking about tonight of leaders. Those who lead God in charge or in command. Then watch this. Those who have influence or power. Amen. Amen. Influence or power. That's where you got to be careful. Mm -hmm. Amen. Right. When you have influence with people, you need to be careful. That's right. You gotta have the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. Because you'll get away with that power will go to the top of your head. Amen. So listen, in the third chapter of First Timothy, begin at the very first verse, it says, This is a true saying. That what? If a man desire the office If a man desire the office of a bishop, then what? He desires a good work. Amen. It's one thing the elder never allowed them to labor him with, and that was a bishop. Amen. Yeah. He had the qualification, but he never took on the title of bishop. Mm. They just called him Life with Solomon Mishaw, the happy of my preacher. Yeah. Amen. That was sufficient enough for him. That's right. Amen. For he that desire the office of a bishop that desireth a what? Good work. Now listen, the second verse says a bishop then must be what? Blameless. Blameless. You can't be cock-eyed. Mm. You can't be pigeon-toed. You cannot be a cigar-sucking, bow-legged, knock-needed, pigeon-toed preacher. Amen. Preach it. Talking about don't do as I do, do as I say do. Amen. There's so many of them out there chasing women, lying and stealing and drinking liquor. 
That's right. And they're leading people, and the people are saying, well, if the preacher can do it, I can do it. <clears throat> but you must be what? Blameless. And listen to this. The husband or what? One wife. Amen. Sister Tawana, stand up so they can see you. And that's my wife. All right. And I don't have any other. Any other. Amen. One wife. Amen. Amen. And one wife meaning one wife. Amen. Amen. A bishop then must be blameless, the husband of one wife. Mm -hmm. Then what? Vigilant. Vigilant. You got to be in it. Amen. Mm -hmm. To go after it. Go get it. Diligent. Active. Amen. Amen. Then what? Sober. You got to be sober. Amen. As I said earlier, how many of you want to see a drunk man? Driving you down the road. Amen. When it comes down to leadership, you can't have an unsober individual at the helm. Because he will wreck your soul. Amen. Right. He'll lead you into things that you ought not so to be, and it will wreck your soul. Amen. Sober and then what? Of good behavior. Good behavior. Amen. Isn't that something? Can't have no bad behavior. Yeah. Preacher has a bad behavior. Mm. Listen, read. Given to hospitality. Given to hospitality. Amen. Don't mind sharing and doing and helping, working out, accepting, dealing with people, being verse hospitable. Amen. Mm. Read. Apt to teach. And then you've got to be qualified to teach. Yeah. Amen. You cannot teach until you've been taught. That's right. Amen. And then you've got the Holy Ghost, and the Holy Ghost is the preacher. All right. It will lead you, guide you, and direct you into everything that you ought to say. That's right. Amen. Listen, read. <clears throat> Not given to wine. Not given to wine because wine is a marker, church. Strong drink is raging, and whosoever is deceived thereby is not wise. I don't care if it's but one little drop. It isn't wise. That's right. Not given to wine. Read. No striker. No striker. Hitting folks and carrying on. But what? Not greedy of filthy lucre. Not greedy of filthy lucre. There's so many preachers today ain't going to give you nothing until you pay them. And they measure what you give them according to how much and what they're going to talk about. If you're going to pay me a little bit, I'll give you a tip of a service. You pay me a whole lot, I'll get, I'll sweat for you. Hey Amen. Kicking his feet all up. Women love to see man kick his feet up. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Tickle the flip. Hey Amen. Not greedy or filthy lucre. That's money. Yeah. I gotta have a dollar. And I've had them sell me that. Yeah, yeah. They they pay me. I I give them a good sermon. Amen. But I thank God. I ain't here for money. That's it. You can't pay me. That's right. Because I got a boss. Mm -hmm. And he's richer than all y'all put together. That's right. Amen. That's right. How we doing, church? Amen. Greedy or filthy lucre. Read. But patient. But patient. Amen. Sometimes people want me. You need to do this. You need. No, just, just slow down. Slow down. Slow down. Take your time. We'll work this out. Gradually. Patient. Patient. Yeah. Patient. Patient. Read. Not a brawler. Not a brawler. Fighting and scrapping and going on. Arguing and stewing. And then not what? Not covetous. Not wanting what belongs to somebody else. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah. You got a big house. I got to have a big house. Then I think I ought to have yours. Amen. Covers. 
Be content with whatever so you have. Amen. Whatever state you are found to be in, the Lord said, therewith be what? Content. content. Amen. And not covers it, designed to have what belongs to someone else. Read. One that ruleth well his own house. One that ruleth well his own house. Amen. Amen. That's one thing is a certainty. I rule my house. All right. Amen. Amen. That's one thing is of a certainty. That's a positive thing. Mm. That you must rule your own house. Read. Having his children in subjection to ah. all gravity. Amen. Isn't that something? Yes. Children just as wild. Mm. Amen. Buck wild, yeah. Some folks say they just buck wild. Yeah. Amen. Boys will be boys. Yeah. The Lord said having them in gravity. Amen. And I thank God for the ability that He gave in teaching us mm -hmm. how to raise up our children in the admonition of the Lord. Amen. They get old, they get grown. Amen. I'm finished with them. They're on their own then. They're between them and the Lord. But when you come around me and you want to be around me, there's certain rules and regulations. All right. Amen. My dad didn't allow us to walk around the house with a hat on and our shirt tails out. All right. Amen. You go in the house, you take your hat off. I don't care how much playing you're doing around the house, you make sure you got that shirt tail in. That's right. gravity, keeping them in a certain status. Yes. Train. Amen. One that ruleth, ruleth well. See, the husband is the head of the wife. And you've got to be that head. That's right. Didn't ask for it. God gave it to you. Had a situation where she decides she's going to do something else. And I said, no, you ain't. Oh, yeah. Okay. Turn it over to Jesus. When Jesus got finished with it, apologies came forth. Amen. Things fell apart on her. You want to be on your own? You're on your own. Oh. You know, and they get that way sometimes. They think that, you know, they can do it without you. Wait a minute. God gave you to me for to be a helpmate unto me. Yeah. Amen. And God did not create the man for the woman. He created the woman for the man. Yes. So you're supposed to be a help unto me. And you can't be a help run around going to be your own independent person. How we doing, church? Amen. One that ruleth well his own house and everybody in the house from the head to the tail, from the top to the bottom, you must rule. Amen. God gave it to you to rule. Yes. And these are qualifications. One that ruleth well his own house, having his children in subjection with what? All gravity. gravity. For if what? For if a man know not how to. For if a man know not how to take care of his own house, how shall he take care of what? The church. See, the church is nothing but a large family. That's right. That's all it is. Church is nothing but a family. Amen. The family of God. The yeah. royal family of God. Amen. And in the family, you got isms and schisms. But as far as the head is concerned, you got to keep it tight. Amen. Amen. Yeah. You got to keep it tight. For if a man know not how to rule his own house, how shall he take care of what? The church of God. Sixth verse says what? Not a novice. You cannot be a beginner. Yeah. Amen. And there's a reason why God don't want the bishop to be a beginner. Amen. Amen. Here's why. Read. 
Let's be lifted up. With Let's pride. be lifted up with pride. What happens is, here they come. You preach a good sermon. Here come the sisters. Amen. Amen. Pumping you up. Mama pumping you up. Sisters pumping. Oh, you did a wonderful job. You sound just like your daddy. Amen. Like my son out there driving. Yeah, he's been out there for a little bit. And he wants to show off out there one day. Mm. Oh, letting the kids boost him up. Oh, he just running on past dad. Got back at the end of the day. So I'm going to see you in my room. Mm. Amen. We're going to have a heart to heart talk in here. Yeah. Came to the room after he settled down, done his log book and everything, came to the room. I said, listen, don't try to show off on me out there because mm -hmm. I will run circles around you. So All you right. just stay in number two where you belong and everything will be all right. Yeah. Didn't have no more problem with that. Mm -hmm. Amen. Set it yeah. straight. When you see something good and not a lie, nip it in the bud. Mm -hmm. Amen. Nip Amen. it in the bud right away. Not a novice. Amen. Let's be lifted up. Amen. See, I know how to behave myself. Kids, you know, you need to do this. And folk, you need to do that. You need to do this. No. I'm driving. You ride. Amen. That's but right. You know, they'll come along. They'll pump you up. Yeah. They got out there competition. Bus one, bus two, bus three, bus four. And there's always got to be some competition going on. We better than this one, and that one better than that one, and this one can't do this, and that one can do that. And everybody trying to show off. Amen. Not a novice. But see, after you get a little age on you, amen, you settle down and do like you're supposed to do. But yeah. before that, amen. David said, before I was afflicted, what did I do? I went astray. Right. So it was good for me that I've been afflicted, That's right. that I might learn thy statutes. Amen. Amen. Not a novice, lest being lifted up with pride, he fall into the what? Condemnation of the devil. And when you fall into the condemnation of the devil, you lose your influence. You cannot convince nobody that Jesus is the answer because he'll ask you, well, what happened to you? You done fell into condemnation. And what good are you? You don't have a voice anymore. And that's what the devil wants. He wants to shut you up. Moreover, what? Moreover, he must have a good report. Have a good report of them that are where? Without. Amen. Sure, everybody can live right sitting in church. Yeah. But what about when you get outside? And when you get around certain influential people, amen? Right. What happens then? You get around certain crowds. Mm -hmm. You forget all about church. Yes, sir. That you were a member of church. Amen. Amen. You started flinging and slinging with the crowd. Amen. Then forgot all about God. I thank God for keeping me. Amen. I don't care where I went. It's one thing that I've learned. God is everywhere. Yep. Amen. And he sees everything. That's right. So you can't hide from him. So if you keep that in mind, that God sees what I'm doing, you'll be all right. Because it's just like going down the highway and you look up and see the policeman. You're going to do everything you're supposed to do right to the T. Because you know he will give you a ticket in a minute. And you don't want no ticket. Isn't that something people scared to death of a ticket? Mm. Amen. What about hell? Mm. That's huh. Preach it. Moreover, he must have what? A good report. good report of them that are without. Amen. So many individuals are messed up on the outside, but in front of the people, all oh, they just raise them all up, lift them up. If they could only see them on the outside and hear what folks had to say. That's right. An individual tell me about one of the preachers. He said, if he going to heaven, I don't want to go there. I said, now what in the world did he do to cause that brother not to want to go to heaven if this brother's going? 
That's not a good report. Amen. People come up to me, oh, you know, brother, I would like to be like you one day. Now, don't be like me. Be like Jesus. That's right. The only thing I'm doing is showing you the Jesus, the Christ-like attitude. Yeah. Moreover, he must have a good report of them which are without, lest what? Lest he fall into reproach. Lest he fall into reproach and the snares of who? The devil. The devil. Amen. Listen. Go to the book of Acts, 6th chapter. Disciples had to do something because the workload got a little too heavy for them. Amen. <clears throat> Talk a little bit about the diggers now. Amen. Yeah. Sixth chapter of Acts, <clears throat> beginning at the first verse. Says what? <clears throat> and in those days. And in those days. When the number of the disciples were multiplied, there arose a murmuring among the Grecians against the Hebrews because what? Their widows were neglected. In the daily administration. So you see, the church is nothing but a large family. Mm. Amen? Amen. It has responsibilities, needs, desires, wants. Amen? Wants. Amen? Wants. Amen. And these different administrations. Amen. There's so many people here and there, and they were coming in on the disciples. Then the twelve called a multitude of the disciples unto them and said, it is not reason that we should what? Leave the word of God and do what? Serve tables. Amen. You find me out there in the yard planting flowers, cutting grass, <laughs> blowing leaves. And some laying at home. Rest. All right. Pastor out here working. Yeah. Amen. Isn't that something? Yeah. It is not reason. Amen. Read it again, brother. It is not reason that we should do what? Leave the, Leave the, word, the of word of God and serve table. And here's what I want you to do. Read. Wherefore, brethren. Brethren, do look, what? Look ye, out among, look ye out among you seven men of what? Honest people. It's got to be honest. Yeah. Because he's dealing with money. He's dealing with the souls of mankind. That's right. It has to be honest and what else? Full of the Holy Ghost. Full of the Holy Ghost and what? And wisdom. And he's got to have some wisdom. Whom what? Whom we may appoint over this business. There's a business that needs to be taken care of. That's right. Amen. Amen. Things that need to be done on the business side of the family, mm. the church. And what? But we will give ourselves. To we will give ourselves to what? Continually, Continually to, prayer. to prayer and to what? And to the ministry of the word. And to the ministry of the word. And they got these seven men together. And there was one that was just exceptional. Isn't that something? There's always going to be somebody that's going to be more exceptional than the others. And that was Stephen. Yeah. Stephen was a man full of faith and of the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. And when they set these individuals before the apostles, they lay, prayed and laid their hands on them. And the seventh verse says, And the word of God increased, and the number of the disciples multiplied in Jerusalem. How? Greatly. Greatly. And what happened? And a great company of the priests. The great company of the priests were what? Were obedient to the faith. Amen. We've been talking about this faith. That was once delivered to the saints. Mm -hmm. Amen. That was once delivered to the saints. And Stephen what? Full of faith. Full of faith and power. Did great wonders and miracles among the people. Amen. Amen. Back over in Timothy.
a verse. Watch this now. Three and eight. Likewise. Likewise. Must what? The deacons be grave. Amen. Grave means sensible. Having common sense. Yes. Down to earth. Steady. Amen. Amen. Steady. Firm. Committing to the cause. Amen. Amen. Yes. Read. Not double tongue. Not double tongue. Say one thing and do something else. Read. Not given to much wine. Not given to much wine. Not greedy of filthy lucre. A hole in the mystery of the faith in what? A in pure a pure conscience. conscience. Read. And let these also first. And let these also first be proven. You don't get into the digging ship and then learn. <laughs> yeah. You're supposed to be already there. All right. Amen. Yeah. But you find that he's out there and he's dipping and dodging and whatnot. They're trying to get it together and can't even exalt. All right. Let these first be proven and then what? And then let them use the office of a deacon. Read. Being found blameless. Found blameless. Even so must what? Their wives. They got it. Who's your wife? Where's she at? Stand up and point her out. Stand up and point her out. Is that your wife? So y'all all know that's his wife. You got any more out there? <laughs> Think Paul? Who's your wife? Stand up and point her out. So we can see who she is. Sister Iris, stand up. Is that that is that your wife? You got any more? Then Keith? How many fiancés you got? Read again, brother. Even so must their wives be grave. Grave what? Not slanderers. Not slanderers. Read. Sober. Sober. Isn't that something how he put that even on the wives? You got to help your husband. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Even so must the wives be what? Grave, not slanderous, sober, faithful in how many things? All things. Amen. Amen. So now you wives know what you got to do. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. You just as responsible. Because that's your husband. That's Amen. Right. Amen. 12 first said, let the diggers be what? Husbands of one wife. How many? One wife. Mm. And then what? Ruling their children and their own houses well. And he didn't say rule the house under the wife, did he? Ruling their children and their own house well. Children have more power and more say than the husband do. Ain't supposed to be. Digging is supposed to rule his own children and his house just as the pastor and the minister is. All right. Amen. Amen. How we doing, church? Personal. Yeah. Read. For they that have used the office of a deacon. For they that have used the office of a deacon now. Read. Well purchased. Well to purchased to themselves a good degree and great boldness in the faith. Which what? Which is in Christ Jesus. Amen. 
and in conclusion. Y'all like to hear that, don't you? That means we're getting ready to end it up. In conclusion, 1 Corinthians, first chapter. And this is to both and all. Amen. This is to both and all. All right. First Corinthians, first chapter, tenth verse says what? Now I beseech you, brethren. Now I beseech you, brethren. Read. By the name of our Lord. By the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Read. That you all. That you all do what? Speak the same thing. <sighs> That you all speak. Can you imagine if the elder had one preacher in New York saying one thing, one in Philadelphia saying another thing, one in Newport News saying something different, and the one in Richmond just ain't got a standard at all? Let them do like they want to do. That you all speak the same thing from Newport News to New York City. Every church had the same scroll, obedience, love, reverence, respect. Obedience, love, reverence, respect. Every one of them. Sister Michelle put it up there. Those are her words. That every leader should have obedience, in their lives, love in their lives, reverence and respect for leadership. First to God, then to leadership. That's it. That you all speak what? The that same the thing. thing and that there what? Be no divisions. Elder was noted for a great accomplishment, especially when it came to black folks. Because yeah. it is hard to keep black folks on one accord. Amen. Amen. They so easy. Dip off and going in a different direction. And the elder was credited a great achievement of keeping folks on one accord. Because yeah. you know how he did it? He only gave them one doctrine. That's straight from the book. Amen. That there be no divisions among, but that what? Watch this now. But that you might be what? Perfectly. Perfectly what? Joined together. Joined together how? In the same, same mind. Same mind and what? The same judgment. Amen. That's what he left them with. And truly, thank you, Digging. We need to follow suit. Died in every eye, crossing every T, line upon line, precept upon precept. These are the qualifications. And if we abide by these qualifications, we'll make it. And not only them that we make it, but them that what? Hear us. Amen. If the leaders are together, you don't have no excuse. None whatsoever. So may God bless your church. Heaven ever smile upon you. Everybody bleed to hear the truth tonight. The Lord said you shall know the truth, and the truth shall what? Make you free, free from what? Whatever's holding you, captive against your will. Amen. So may God bless you. Turn the service back over to the deacons. Thank you.